So it's been a good few weeks since I recorded the first video on this kind of RFID access control system. And in that time, I've been mainly working on the RFID reader. Um, the key part of the system is being able to leave your tag in place and get a continual and reliable read from it. So it kind of verifies the tag is there, is present, and uh, kind of then can shut off the equipment when the tag's removed. Um, the, the reason for this is if you allow someone to tag into a piece of equipment, there's a good chance they're going to forget to kind of press like a log out button or an exit button or leave button. And um, certainly if, and, and it, yeah, it then means the equipment's kind of open for the next person to use without them kind of registering it. We don't get accurate information about how many people are using this equipment or how long it's being used for. So it's important we can detect tags in place. Um, it, it's kind of works better for, for everyone in this case. Um, and so the, the, these readers I've been working with don't have a tag present card. And so I need to do a continual read from it. So uh, you read once, get the tag, and then a short time later, you can do it again and verify and again and verify. And the problem I had was the, the readers just wouldn't do that. They, they give you one code and that's it. You have to move the tag away, then return it. So my original plan was to toggle the power, um, but it didn't kind of work as I'd expected. Um, so I've spent quite a bit of time messing around with this and getting nowhere. Um, although, as of kind of today, I have um, managed to successfully get this to work with the more expensive reader I've been working with. I could toggle the power on it, and uh, or toggle the reset line, and it'll give me a new code. And it is looking really promising so far. So while I was um, having kind of issues with the RFID reader, not being able to get it to uh, toggle, I started looking at alternatives. And the, the London Hackspace have a system like this in place. Uh, but their system, uh, they use the higher frequency tags, I think it's about 13 megahertz. And these are the, the tags I believe you find in uh, kind of bank cards, contactless bank cards, transport cards, and uh, other bits and pieces like that. It's more kind of more mo more modern the system and in addition to just having an ID number in the tag it also has a program space, memory space, so you can store data in the tag and it also supports kind of encryption and other things so it's um, potentially quite a kind of a cool system. I'd never played around with it before but I uh, had a look around and I found uh, this reader here and this is something I picked up in China early in the year just on the off chance and it turns out it is a uh, reader for this so I've been experimenting with that and that it's really interesting. I hadn't kind of tried this before with this particular type of card. It can read all sorts of things and you can kind of read off the data, you can kind of program back and uh, it's really easy to do. It's, and it's also really, really reliable. Um, it's got a nice kind of um, SPI interface rather than kind of just serial data being chucked out. It's clean and it's consistent. And, uh, and it does have a card present uh, indicator. Although this particular board doesn't, um, they, they do exist where they do have that card present. As I've had success with the other system, um, I'm putting kind of this um, this other system to bed. It would have been cool to do that because you could have done all sorts of stuff, like storing data onto the cards, um, uh, kind of more information there. But um, but no, this is kind of out of the way for now. Okay, so this is my current uh, test setup here. Bit kind of messy, but we've got the. It's actually in an active state at the moment. You can just about see on the bizarrely artifact screen over there. Um, and so I've got the tag in place. This has been sitting here probably for about 10 15 minutes now. After every 30 seconds, it will uh, reset it and do a reread. And it's been pretty reliable. So if I kind of take that away, that should eventually kind of time out. Um, this is the original RFID reader I was using. And um, I've kind of pretty much given up on that one now. I'm just sticking with these um, modules here. It's, uh, oh yeah, okay, so this is the, the countdown now. So the last 10 seconds kind of beeps just to warn you that it's going to shut off. Then it turns off and it displays the last user on the screen here. Um, yes, yeah, so the last user information on there. And so this is just a prototype I was playing around with and how to present it. So I was putting, if I can, rather than putting lots of text on the screen, which is taking out memory and screen space, is how to communicate enough information through other means, which is another reason why I've got the buzzer. So rather than having to display an active or inactive message, 
you can communicate it in other ways. And so at the moment, if you scan a bad tag, you get a, a beep to show the tag's been read, and then you get the kind of downward tone, which indicates an error. And so rather than having to take up time and space on the screen, I communicate it with sound, and probably a colored LED as well. But a positive sound in here is kind of works. And so that's the system as it stands. Um, this is the, the board I kind of got back. And I've designed this to uh, work with kind of connectors down the side. So the idea is to use uh, these style connectors. And so it's easy to kind of plug in and remove. And so there's a connector kind of for the RFID reader, the output relay, uh, display, and power coming in. And the new version I'm just finishing off now has an extra connector, connector up here for a buzzer as well. And I'm also expanding the RFID reader to have four pins, one for the reset as well. And then kind of programming headers and the um, down the bottom here, we've got the ethernet kind of board connector it's that one there. And so that's um, working kind of quite reliably. I've got uh, various kind of indicators on here to show the status. So each kind of the, the RFID reader output's got a power LED, the relay's got a power LED, there's an online LED here. And on the next version, I've just dropped in an arbitrary um, just kind of status LED. And it's useful for debugging purposes. And so I've got a reset switch here and a database reset switch. So it's got an onboard uh, database kind of memory to store information for offline use. And so at the moment for during testing, I've got a button here which resets that, clears it out. Um, that's the other thing that probably needs to be changed. The, the onboard memory here has got enough uh, space for about 30 different users. And we're probably on the edge of that. Um, probably going to have a little bit more that needs to be actively using some of this stuff. So I'll most likely need to drop in an extra memory chip onto the board. But um, on the whole, I'm quite pleased. And it's still fitting in between in like a five centimeter square space. And so that will hopefully go off in the next couple of days. I'll get those boards back. Um, I will get myself a new version of this, the lower kind of powered. Um, uh, readers and see how they're functioning. The display, I think I'm sticking with these kind of OLED screens. Um, I have started to remove information from the displays and running out of, uh, kind of running into memory issues. And so I'm probably going to limit what goes on here just to the user's name and the, I think probably the word active. Uh, pro I think I'm going to need to add a coloured LED on here as well. Um, that will probably reflect the same information as the buzzer. So it will be kind of um, green or red for success, maybe amber for a read, that kind of thing. Just try and communicate that information. But um, for now this is uh, working kind of pretty well, this system. Um, I do need to ensure that I can hang a tag and reliably get a read from this. Um, but once that's out of the way, I can kind of push ahead. Although, to be honest, at this stage, this board is flexible enough to support um, a lot of options. So the display here, I've had this running from the original kind of LCD screen I was testing with, as well as this OLED screen for the same kind of I2C connection, the RFID reader. Um, that's, as long as it's serial, I guess, I've got flexibility there and I've broken out some auxiliary kind of connections just for debugging, so I'm quite pleased with this board so far, and the next one should just improve things a little bit more. Um, hopefully when that comes back, I'll get uh, be able to do another update, uh, hopefully much closer to the end, where it'll most likely be uh, about two or three weeks now.